Coltrane was and is still an amazing teacher, playing amazingly complicated lines and then also capable of going into this really simple chord note lines. Being able to play the most understandable solo on a blues. One of the iconic Coltrane recordings which inspires me and will inspire me for many years to come is the Coltrane recording. Coltrane plays the blues and especially the tune Blues to Bechet. Of course this is Sidney Bechet he's playing to and he's playing this tune on the soprano saxophone, a tribute to Sidney Bechet. Probably one of Coltrane's great heroes. Let's take a look at these amazing Coltrane patterns, which are probably not what you expect from Coltrane. What Coltrane plays as the first thing in this blues is this amazing simple, basically just the chord notes of C7. There are really some great features in this line. Coltrane begins in the third, which I really like. Then jump by my favorite interval, the six, to the C. I love this sound. Ending the line on the B flat, the seventh of the C7, one of the strongest leading tones in the chord. And the great thing about it, it only consists of chord notes. Third, root, seven. Let's look into why this Coltrane pattern have such great melodic features. Of course, the blues begins on a first degree dominant chord. In the second bar, we have the fourth degree dominant chord, the F7. Coltrane's amazing line leads us directly from the C7 to the F7 in the most simple way. The B flat in the C7 is the most obvious leading tone directly towards the A. And in the beginning of this line, Coltrane plays the E the third of the C7. This one is leading directly into the E flat on the F7, the seventh. This is what makes this line so amazing. But there's more. In the second bar of Coltrane's blues, Blues to Bichet, Coltrane plays almost the same line as on the C7. Let's take this down an octave and get a really good look at it. I said the basic line is the same. Coltrane begins on the A, the third of the F7, he still makes the sixth jump, and he ends on the E flat, the seventh of the F7. With almost the same line on the F7 as on the C7, he gets amazing leading tones towards the third bar, the C7 again, the fourth degree to the first degree. The E flat, the seventh of this F7, goes directly into the E, the third of the C7. And leading from the beginning of the line, the A is going directly into the B flat, the seventh of the C7 in bar three. Looking at the basic blues, we have three important dominant chords. Adding the Coltrane line to the last dominant chord, the G7, will look like this. And it's pretty obvious that the G7 leads directly into the C7, since the G7 is the fifth, the dominant chord of the C7. I would advise anyone playing jazz to take these patterns into all the dominant chords they know. Put it into blues forms, put it into all dominant chords you know. These are amazing patterns. Here I add the pattern to a really simple three chord blues. A little extra thing, I added 10 of these licks to the blues form at the end of the lesson transcription, which you can find on my Patreon. If you want these 10 licks written out, you can go to my Patreon and find it there. When you're listening to the Coltrane track, you definitely hear Coltrane elaborate on these small patterns. I'll give a crack at this too. The chimps have discovered how to crack open knots. Technique is remarkable. The first thing Coltrane does is adding an extra note to them. My suggestion is how to learn this. Learn the basic line. Then add or take away notes from the line, developing your own lines. Here are a few examples on what you can do to make new basic lines. Just adding some simple basic rhythms in front of the line. Another thing Coltrane does, which we can use immediately, is adding a chromatic step in front of the line. Looking at the F7 chord, here are the three common chords of the blues I was talking about. The F7, the G7, and 
the C7. Let's tweak this a bit by removing a note. I've removed the first note of the Coltrane line. Now we only have the chromatic approach note. Be creative. Remember to be creative in all your practice and everything you do. Turn around, take stuff away, add stuff. Here I add the chromatic line at the end of the leg which Coltrane plays on the F7. A note to the keen eye and the keen ear who is watching and listening to this video. For the coming part of the video, I did not describe the licks exactly as they are on the record. This is not the meaning. I just want to have the basic idea of the lick. To get the licks exactly as what Coltrane plays, I really recommend you to play the solo or transcribe the solo yourself and moving these lines over the bar line just like Coltrane does. I have added the licks right on the bar line to get it simpler. Listening a little bit further in the blues, the second round, Coltrane plays this. He's focusing on the leading tones toward the chord. And still just playing the basic chord notes. He makes it very, very interesting by adding this little chromatic note, what we talked about just before. How Coltrane uses the approach note or the leading tones is very clear in the second bar which he plays. He moves the pattern from the C7 parallel into the F7 bar. Beginning on the B flat goes up to the C. The G goes up to the A. And the E goes up to the F. Playing in this way, moving the patterns around makes the chords fit spotlessly together. The expansion of this chord note line happens in bar 3 or 4 of this chorus. Where Coltrane takes us all the way down the arpeggio. And again he plays it in such a musical way, just ending simply on the 7th down. That leads us, of course, directly into the A of the F7 chord in bar 5. A lick like this is also really worth taking around in the blues form. The essence of what Coltrane does in these blues lines is play simple and at the same time making the best possible connection to the next bar. What I mentioned earlier, I make lesson transcriptions of all my lessons. In the lesson description I added 10 new Coltrane licks to the blues form like this. You can get the transcription on my Patreon where you have all these licks. Go to my Patreon and find these licks. Two questions for you. Which Coltrane recording is your favorite? Which one of these licks on the blues is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Your support on Patreon makes me able to put out these lessons every week. In each lesson transcription on Patreon, I make extra material which you can apply to your practice and your playing directly. Any questions about this topic or other saxophone topics, please put it in the comments below. Like and subscribe my channel, you know where to find it. And the last thing there is to say is, play music and have fun.